Hello! If you are new to this channel, Miss Coffee Bean sends a warm welcome. Otherwise, nice to see you again. In this video, we will discuss the latest research trends around the question of where natural language processing, or short NLP, is heading to and how to really achieve natural language understanding. You can't learn language from the radio. Why not? Not even from the huge amounts of text on the internet like GPT-3 had access to? No, not even then. If you want to know why, look at our previous video on this, linked below, where we discuss why a model trained on text only cannot really understand meaning, but it can fake it really well. So what do we need to learn language? This paper answers this question by setting up a roadmap in five levels called the World Scope. The World Scope 1 is the corpus. A long time ago, even before I was born, the people in NLP were trying to exhaustively annotate clean corpora of natural language. These corpora were first used to reconstruct the language structure, like syntax trees, then to build word vectors, first not contextualized, like word to vec where apple and apple are the same, or contextualized word embeddings, computed dynamically depending on the context. Do these representations really capture meaning? The core assumption on the corpus level is that the context gives the words their meaning. And it is a very plausible assumption. When someone asks Miss Coffee Bean what coffee is, she can use other words to answer, like in a definition, a hot drink made from the roasted and ground seeds, and so on. Word embeddings, like the ones from neural networks trained on text, are doing the same thing, defining words in relationship to other words. Word vectors do not mean anything by themselves, but get their meaning in relationship to the other words and their vectors through vector distances. But what is the limitation of defining words with other words? Let's say, for example, that you do not know what the word seed means. Then Miss Coffee Bean can define it further in terms of other words, like bean, and this you can define again in terms of other words like kidney. What is a kidney? A bean-shaped organ. What is a bean? A kidney-shaped seed. I hope you see the point. Sooner or later, one runs into big tautologies, where you define word A in terms of word B and word B in terms of word A. The whole assumption of giving meaning through context basically floats in the air where words help each other towards meaning. But none of these words do stand themselves on a ground. Hmm, then what might a suitable ground for this whole floating construction be? Think about how much clearer things might become if I would show you also a picture of coffee while giving you a definition about it. But images have no place in the corpus era of NLP. Shoo! Go away! And here we are. The second world scope the Internet. In the era of the Internet, the NLP field has been able to make their corpora so much bigger through web crawling that only the Internet bandwidth, the GPUs and energy are the limit. Huge amounts of text make it much easier to think that context gives meaning to words. Language models like GPT-3 can see so many words in so many contexts, one might not even notice that the words do not stand on a real ground and that the language models are only faking understanding. But we do notice that the impressive results of the last months with GPT-3 are not that of a big step towards natural language understanding. How? Even when important steps are being made in data sizes and neural network sizes, only a comparably little gain is obtained in simple tasks for humans. For example, coreference is still a huge problem. So the era of the internet has shown us that size does matter to solve certain tasks, but this cannot lead us to the goal of understanding natural language. What to do? We might consider calling the images back. Hey, images, come back here. Please! So here we are at World Scope 3. Perception. Ach, it's multimodal NLP. 
Miss Coffee Bean's favorite level. On this level, perception in form of images and sounds comes to aid the NLP journey towards understanding. It should help us in the many cases where world knowledge, together with the assumption that we all see and hear the same world events, makes us leave things unwritten, unexplained. If Miss Coffee Bean says, Okay, bye, I have go have a sip of coffee now. We all have a good intuition why she leaves to drink coffee. She is tired, needs the caffeine and likes the taste of coffee. Oh, that's strange. We know this without it being explicitly said. But a purely text-based model could never learn this if it was never written anywhere. Grounding words in their physical appearance in images would surely help a machine translation model to learn that a ball and ominge are the same thing but in different languages. So we have seen that there is a lot of motivation for multimodal learning to marry the field of NLP with other amazing fields like computer vision or audio signal processing. All this has led to great progress on tasks that require natural language grounding, like visual question and answering, visual common sense reasoning, image captioning, multimodal machine translation, and so on. For more details exactly on this area, check out Miss Coffee Bean's playlist on multimodal learning, linked in the description below. World Scope 3 is great. We gear up machine learning models with perception, which helps a lot to observe things. But can we go even one step further? What if sometimes we must wait too long for something to happen to observe it? We as humans would then interact with the system and trigger the event that helps us gather more information. Could we also build this into our models? Why not? And hereby we are already on the level 4 of understanding, embodiment. This means that by taking actions with a physical body, the system could trigger situations by itself, observe these and act back again based on the triggered events. We would have a model that would experience how things act similarly and learn new words. While this sounds awesome, it opens a huge Pandora box of yet unsolved problems. When to explore new situations, when to learn more about the current one, how to plan a set of actions, how to react, like how to move a muscle, how to translate these new experiences and interactions into language. Does an experience even need verbalization or is it common sense? Now, let's move on to the top level, the world scope 5. The social world. While in the stages before the model would have learned how to acquire data to have a good understanding of the world in relation to the model itself, it still doesn't have any incentive to communicate or to use natural language that it understands in the first place. Interpersonal communication is the most important usage of natural language and it also makes the most important test for AI, the Turing's imitation game. Only after an agent has learned to use language to affect the world by social interaction, it has understood not only the meaning of language, but how to use this meaning to change the world. But while these five stages stand apparently separated, with research doing well in stages 1 and 2, well enough in stage 3 and only baby steps in stages 4 and 5, one has to also understand how interdependent they are. While chatbots are a thing nowadays, we could argue that we are already making a huge progress in the fifth social stage. But that is quite not true. While the system is apparently socializing with the user, it has no understanding about the communication situation, about the user and his feelings. Then the chatbot also doesn't know about what utterances are hurtful in general, and which ones are hurtful only for specific persons and are playful in other social situations. The real stage 5 cannot be reached without having modeled the previous stages of perception and embodiment well enough. So this was it, Miss Coffee Bean's shortened and simplified version of this paper's story. If she made you curious enough, you can also read the full paper by yourself. As always, find the link in the description below. Do not forget to like and subscribe and share out the content if you want to support Miss Coffee Bean. Okay, bye.